somehow, Girl. some way, the nearest competition was still nowhere oh near God. close. Then oh Gridman came along and started the Holy Church of Rika's Thighs, only oh for the faith God. to be fractured Jesus. when the sacred temple of Akane's feet was founded. Oh my lord, what's wrong with this? I became a religious man this <laughs> You nasty. Talk about your man, Makai McCann, director here with another Giga Reaction Best Anime 2018. Uh, and the last one we saw, Best Anime 2017. That one uh, was very unexpected. Uh, we went, uh, uh, he went Made in the Best. I went with AOT. He went with uh, new Neo Nunu, some crap like that. I went with Konosuba. We differ in a lot of places, but at the same time, our tastes remain somewhat similar. He did make me say that Made in Abyss OST is actually pretty fire. There's a lot of things in Made in Abyss where I'm kind of iffy on. I'm like, yeah, it's alright. But the OST, we can all agree. That thing we be banging, that shit be banging. I would put on my playlist, I'd put on the jam list. You know, the jam list the one a little shoddy, but that's not the point. Neither here nor there. That aside, Jump into the best anime 2018. I'm excited to see what his picks are for each category. I want to know what was a hot new hotness that came out this season. Uh, because off the top of my head, I can't remember. So it's a nice little time capsule that we're gonna ride through together. If you made it this far and you have not already, sub, like, all that, comment down below. What was your best anime 2018 for you personally? Reaction starts now. 2017 was a pretty okay year for anime. Correct, well, 2018 sir. Must have heard that and was like, <laughs> okay, watch this. Oh my god. Attack of the furries. Red! What? There were so many shows worth watching that there wasn't even enough time to watch everything worth watching. So I'm not even going to pretend to say that I as one man can actually Ooh, say Jojo? what the best part Part 5 came out in 2018. Was, because I guarantee that there was something that I missed. However, with such a massive year, I wouldn't want to miss the chance to talk about some of my favorite things. I know last year I made this video because of the anime Boruto. Awards, but I'm not going to be involved this year, so I'm just doing this completely for myself because it basically gives me an excuse to talk about everything I had to cut in my 2018 year review. There's no official structure I'm following. I'm just going to talk about shit I liked. So let's do this. Oh my god. Fuck every other category. We're Best skipping girl. right to the big one. Uh, 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 heartbreaking because there were only so many head pats I could give. Because you're a good girl and you're a good girl and you're a good girl and no, 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 not 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 not. Anzi reached daughter levels we had previously thought impossible. Best girl in Zombieland Saga was made irrelevant because oh, the manager Zombie managed Zombie. to outshine them all. Historia's character actions literally made me stand up and cheer in the scene where she finally told Eren to shut up and get over it. Just eat me already, damn it! I can't live like this, so end this. Shut up, dumbass! Stop your crying! I don't care! Oh my god! Oh, please have my Aaron Nah, the baddest bitch they in all the world. Trigger, but man, do they know how to make their fucking girls. Zero Two dominated her show so heavily that oh, even after the two thirds mark of the series when her character went... Tough. Oh my god, all the way in. Somehow, <laughs> some way, the nearest competition was still nowhere oh near god. close. Then oh Gridman came along and started the Holy Church of Rika's Thighs, only oh for the faith god. to be fractured Jesus. when the sacred temple of Akane's feet was founded. Oh my lord, what's wrong with this? I became a religious niggas? man this year. What's wrong with real, these niggas, bro? Simple, I could have essentially this is actually the best girl! Competition against itself and oh, so he said it. It could have won best girl competition against itself. That's how good it is, yes. My for best girl, complain, close which my would still clearly be the winner. But despite my Rise being by far my favorite girl of the year, I still have to give a shout out to Miki from Devil Man Crybaby, who has to win by default because she was clearly head and shoulders above the rest. What do I feel like? I'm going to hell. What if I, it's a bad I feel joke. with the amount of quality we had this year, I would be doing a disservice a to many great shows that got largely overlooked for one reason or another. In other words, the ones that weren't simulcast Bucky! by Netflix or were just on Amazon Prime. In the Netflix corner, you had Dragon Pilot and High Score Girl. Dragon Pilot is right up there with Hinamatsuri as one of the most uplifting anime of the year in this weird mm. slice of life where dragons can transform into fighter jets after oh, swallowing shit. a human. And that what? sounds like vor and it oh, is kind of no. vor, but it's like what wholesome vor. 
No. Let's just immediately forget I just said that line. And High School Girl was a cute romantic okay. comedy set in the backdrop of 90s gaming. This was an amazing love letter to old school arcades with real life games and consoles that oh, existed. Shit. If you have any interest in retro gaming, you will absolutely love this. But to me, the biggest Wait, unclicked anime of the year shit? was oh, yeah. Banana Fish. This got swept under the carpet thanks to Amazon Prime and the strong homoeroticism on display at the beginning. But despite the blatant man service, Banana oh, yeah. Fish is not a yaoi. Instead, it's an intense, dark crime thriller that tackles very adult themes, including sex oh, trafficking, boy. drug abuse, trauma, rape, PTSD, oh, with a boy. very human relationship right at the center. If you come in expecting a show about two boys breaking each other in bed, you're gonna be sorely disappointed because the only one who gets Jesus. broken is probably gonna be you by the end of it. Oh, I just Jesus. want Ash to be happy. <laughs> Damn, I've heard banana fish. Yep, this one's gonna be a biggie. I'm splitting this up into two parts, my favorite fight scene and my favorite action series, as all the best fight scenes fight this scene year came from continuing fair. franchises. And boy, did we get some fucking amazing Black Clover for the year. win. Hiroaka, of course, returned with the Battle of the Alls, that in terms of narrative weight was my moment of the year, even if the fight itself did just boil down to one orgasmic punch. Black Bulls versus Veto did the impossible and made me cheer at the sight of Asta screaming at the top of his lungs. Attack on Titan had some absolutely godly cuts that made me question yeah, if I ever did. want this series to go back to being about fighting titans. I mean, Never. screw fighting giant naked people when we can just watch oh Levi enter a bar in the most extra way possible. Uh. It's a Friday and I want my fucking beer! Goku vs. Jiren was hype enough that Mexico actually advertised it like a professional boxing match that was publicly broadcasted. Even if it wasn't technically legal, making it the only fight in 2018 that people uh. legally streamed for free and wasn't disappointed enough in to still ask for their money. Uh. But man, uh. I would have a hard time picking anything but Naruto and Nah, Sanji this fight Naruto. was fucking dug in though. Naruto fights continue to blow my goddamn mind with the, the frame, Jutsu, tempo bro. and technique of old school Hong Kong Kung Fu movies mixed in with anime superpowers. Powers. I mean, just look at this. No, it's fire. Look at this nigga Naruto with the hands, bro. Nah, it's Anyone fire, bro. It was fire. Realize Momoshiki using Wing Chun in his hand-to-hand -hand scuffles. This fight is literally it, man, with fucking superpowers. How it awesome is. is that? But what I also love is that it still contains the same tactical depth without stopping to explain everything that happens and just letting it play out in real time, which oh, was, was gorgeous. I mean, Naruto and Sasuke even reused the same Shuriken Shadow Clone strat they used as kids, which was yeah, they was did. Just, nah, it's <laughs> fucking fire, the nigga. Choreography, direction, execution, and just pure beautiful. orgasmic spectacle. This was was my fight of the year. Kurama Susano is fucking shows, insane. Though, there wasn't actually that many to pick from this year. Sword Art Online Alternative was just a celebration of everything not was good. Sword Art Online. I mean, it was so not Sword Art Online that they straight up told you that this was not Sword Art Online. Sword Art Online. From the uh, first two episodes of Megalobox, I was essentially expecting Hajime no Bebop with a pure Hajime no Bebop. Test, but it's <laughs> like the animation esque introspective character study that explores the themes of desire and ambition. It was really good, just not in the way I expected. And as a side note, I still can't get over the fact that they purposely scaled it down to 480p to give it a 90s aesthetic. Which Damn. I get, but I just want to experience this in the best quality it can be. I mean, why stop there? Why not give me the choice to experience this in the authentic mid 2000s aesthetic? Mega Box episode two. Oh my god, this is how compilations start. Oh yeah, this is my so because That's how I used to watch Dragon Ball Z back in my day. Winner for action show of the year. Every year there comes along one show that makes me think I'm actually a five-year-old kid trapped in an adult body, and holy hell, oh, Gridman was it this year. This what? made me feel like I was watching Saturday morning cartoons again oh, as a kid, God. yet somehow going in a direction that genuinely surprised me. It's got giant monsters, it's got robots combining, it's got people shouting attack names, and it's got CG that I actually liked. If you grew up a fan of CG, Power Rangers, wow, or if you're like me bad. and you grew up to badly tied up episodes, of Ultraman whenever you stayed around your grandma's house in Asia, you will have uh, an absolute uh, blast with this show. It strikes the perfect balance of childish nostalgia with adult themes done in a way anyone can enjoy. Thank you, Trigger, for saving anime, anime once strikes again. again from yourselves. Hey! 
Look, we all know I'm not the OP guy, but even I can appreciate a good OP when I see one. Jojo is back, as stylish as ever, with a James Bond-esque opening, and yet somehow got outstyled in the same season by Damn. a freaking idol show. And hold on, yes, that's the sound of every Jojo fan getting ready to crucify me. Pop yes, Team Epic was correct. an awesome meme-filled frenzy. You had a uh, Kimi no Sei. Which Kimi is no Sei! Song, and you can't convince me otherwise. Persona nah, 5, I ain't gonna lie. Right there, hey, that's it right there. It's Bunny Senpai opening, bro. Kimi no Sei! Kimi the only good thing about Fuck y'all. Yes, I can't sing. I know. Which had an absolute Shut your banger mouth. of a song that I listened to countless times, even if I never got past the second episode. But in my mind, Ouch. there was one OP oh that God. really stood out to me above all others. Something that completely blew my mind. And that was my discovery of watching anime on Netflix and having a skip OP button. That's dirt. That was my favorite OP of 2018. Oh my god. Best ED. I just really liked in Devil Man Cry Baby how in its ED it just let you skip to the next episode. <laughs> Holy shit, Best OST was a hard one this year because there were so many great contenders. The Pillows were back with their A-game in Fully Cooly Progressive and Alternative, which turned out to be pretty much the only thing I liked about the new seasons. A place further than the universe mastered the art of the Anohana Bitch Cry technique that has now conditioned me to bawl my eyes out on command at the mere signal of using any of its insert songs. This fuck, man. Uh, excuse me for a second. <laughs> But overall, there were three Terrible. vastly different OSTs that were a close contender for the top spot. Violet Evergarden was far and beyond the most Ooh. beautiful soundtrack this year, which is only fitting for the most beautiful looking show this year. This OST takes you on this dazzling, beautiful journey and manages to communicate emotions more succinctly than Violet is able to do for most of this show. Considering Ouch. the show was about learning to express yourself and coming to terms with your feelings, the track said more than a lot of the dialogue ever needed to. Mm. And then, to completely switch gears, as Devilman Crybaby's use of synthwave gave the show one of the most unique sounds I've heard in anime, giving it this retro futuristic feel that was pretty much perfect for Masaki Iwasa's mind blowing vision. It is a Jesus. psychedelic, ecstasy fueled acid trip, and I fucking love it. However, by uh, a thin margin, there's one score that just beats both of them out. Megalobox's OST immediately stood out as something special. The hip hop inspired sound was perfect for the gritty urban street life and Joe's journey from grind me underground to superstardom. You know you're listening to a special OST yeah, where every job. episode brings in a new track where you end up hunting it down and putting it on your phone so you can listen to it on endless repeats and Megalobox was no exaggeration just that. The whole soundtrack is so incredibly stacked whether you just want something to chill to, something sad or something that makes you feel so invincible mm. that you're hyped up to get in a ring and kick some fucking ass. <laughs> Hands. All right, time for some oh quick fire categories about shows I've recently talked about, so I don't want to repeat myself. Best slice of life, Kumpf, the anime. Best what? adventure, a place that's actually within this universe. Best animation, Violet Evergarden, and it wasn't even close. Damn. Best thriller, Devil Baby Cry Man. Best you fantasy, really like Tatama got reincarnated as a slimy boy and tried to make friends with everyone before becoming Hokage of a hero. Hell yeah! Been this title long enough, yeah, I really want to Hell see yeah. the Best Slime. drama or romance. While well, the best couple of this year is clearly Suck to Admire, I feel of course. He was a better romance show that explores teen love better, but Bunny Grill Senpai still remains my drama of this year. It's the and best! That leads us to the biggie. The anime of the year, Shonen Todd Stand Up! The city. Shut oh, up! That's right, best anime of 2018! Just kidding, guys. Pingu only got a cameo in this one because it's a place further than the universe. I don't need to say any more about Really? It, a place further than plenty, the universe? In a year of amazing anime, to me, this one stood out as the most special. But let's be honest, this year it was in no way clean cut or will be unanimous among us, so no, I do not. have one final thing to say. What? Before we truly hang up our coats and say goodbye to everything that happened in 2018 for real, I wanted to take some time for serious reflection on the year gone by. The general consensus for 2018 was that it was an amazing year for anime, and personally, I 
absolutely agree. It has been a very long time since I've seen a year with this many good shows in it with as much variety as it had. Action, romance, variety. slice of life, fantasy, like Moe, idols, cute girls, mecha, sports, comedy. There was something for fantasy everyone. Fantasy is a Kai. I'm sure and Baki. Person can find several shows they'd enjoy, even if they could be some niche show that wasn't really talked about. There's been a huge abundance of anime for a few years now, but 2018 didn't just have more shows than people could keep up with. It had more good shows than people could keep up with. And the scary That's thing important. is more that good looking at 2019, shows. that good doesn't seem shows. to be slowing down at all. The first impressions of this winter season is that it's really fucking strong with a mix of small and large franchises in a variety of genres. Mob! Like, fuck, is this Shield the final Hero. form of anime we were hoping to reach 5, 10, 20 years ago when we wondered what if anime actually became popular? We're like, getting there, what baby. What if there was enough interest in this medium that there would be more shows is worth watching than we could realistically keep up with and that's kind of happened this year hasn't it yet despite Violet all, Evergarden still haven't finished missing, it doesn't it to me 2018 was the year of countless great shows and zero classics once again Ooh, there wasn't a show no that classics. lit up the community I it really like left its mark Bro. on the year and will be something that we'll look back on and say yes that was Ooh. the show or shows that defined 2018 that's well, I fair think pound for pound there were just as many shows worth watching if not more so with more variation than the last legendary years of anime or 2011 2006 and 7 it just mm, doesn't feel as special and I'm not sure if that's just me nostalgically looking back or because Lion. it's just what anime has evolved into those were the years where the shows defined that generation of anime fans. Mm. Death Note, Code Geass, Guren Lagan, Madoka, Steinsgate. But today, anime is no longer that same uniform medium. As I've said before, being an anime fan doesn't hold the same weight as it used to because you can have Facts. people that are anime fans that watch completely different stuff. And the anime Facts. shows themselves have become this sort of short, hard-hitting commodity that we consume, enjoy, then move on from. It makes Ouch. me wonder if we'll True. ever see a classic again. As I look back on this past year, I don't have a standardized mm. list of top anime I would recommend from the year but instead just a very healthy choice of shows for whatever taste mood or niche that you want you don't have to look too hard to find a show you'll enjoy but I feel because of that it lacks the same cohesion and identity because despite how many great shows there are despite the sheer volume of choice we have to pick from and the variety of everything available by the end of 2019 we would have forgotten about 90% of them and that's what I think that's I'll fair remember 2018 for it's the year I noticed anime was nowhere near the uniform landscape it was it's the year we got more great choice than ever from the result of the heavier commercialization that has come with its popularity Animation. it's the year i feel the landscape matured to a point that it became more reminiscent to other mainstream entertainment industries rather than the niche fandom it used to be but of mm. course anime is still growing and it's still i hear it. i don't blame past. him so who knows what 2019 will have in store for us. i hear him and i and i know exactly Exactly how I feel about it. That was Anime 2018 by Gigu. Best of. So at the end, the feelings he's conveying, he's like, I feel like Anime 2018 was good, but there was no classics. I feel like in that year, if you're watching anime, I would have agreed with him. I'm like, yeah, that's a year for some pretty good anime, some really good stuff, but I don't know how well some of this stuff is gonna age or move forward. Fast forward into 2024 when we are right now, and I hard, I hard disagree. In the year of 2018, he kind of didn't cover it, but it was in there. AOT will go down as a classic. My Hero will end as a classic, in my opinion. It will end as a classic. Bunny Senpai, is ended up being a classic, an absolute banger of a classic. It is known in anime community right now, Funga right now, Bunny Girl Senpai is worth a watch. It doesn't matter if you like action, doesn't matter if you like slice of life, rom-com, drama, Bunny Senpai has all of it. And as of right now, I would consider it a classic. Megalobox, mm, almost reach classic level, but I don't think quite so. I don't think quite so. The, the rest of the stuff in the, in the year, he's right. It was good, it was refreshing, it was entertaining, but nothing certified as a classic yet. Even one of my favorite animes from 2018, which was uh, the time I got reincarnated as a slime, that's uh, that's not a classic yet. I don't know if it hit classic levels. Where the anime is right now, as of 2024, it's doing pre it's done pretty damn well for itself. However, we've been I think I want to say on a three year hiatus since it's dropped anything. They dropped Slime Diaries. They dropped a Slime movie, but the anime hasn't been back yet. But they animated some pretty good parts. So he's right in a sense where 
He said 2018 doesn't feel like a lot of classics. It's gonna have any classics. It was just a year of a large explosion of very different anime. And with that, I can agree. But I will say that AOT, Bunny Girl Senpai, will be the classics out of that year, out of those years. Mark my words, those will be classics. Slime, depending on what Slime does in its next season or its following two seasons, we'll see if it ends up as a classic. But right now, my money is on AOT and Bunny Girl Senpai, for sure. My hero, maybe. We'll see how it ends. I'm putting a hard maybe on that My Hero, though. A hard maybe. Um, but overall, uh, I did like it. Baki, came, he showed Baki in this 2018, but he didn't give Baki no awards. I feel like Baki should have won Best Comedy, honestly. Or maybe, depending on which season of Baki, I don't remember which season of Baki came out in 2018, but I feel like they could have won Best Fight. Like the one, it feels like, imagine fighting the goddamn uh, Grasshopper. Come on, that Grasshopper fight. It was so corny, but it was actually still kind of good. Still a little bit good. But yeah, all in all, 2018 was uh, was was very. He described it very accurately. I like that on this one. Uh, he went with his final words after he picked his best anime, which I hard disagree that was the best anime of 2018. Like I don't even remember a lot of anime from 2018, but that one was the best for him, which is fine. Not the best for me, and that I understand. But I I I, I agree with most of his sentiment. Honestly, it, it was a very it was a very interesting year. Looking forward to 2019 and what it brings. That being said, we're going to end this one right here. If you made it this far and you have not already, drop a sub, drop like whole things on me here. Also on page, I'll link in the description. Check that out to show some extra, extra support. Go to Giga's video, rewatch it, run his numbers up. Let him know DN is showing love. Come back over here. Comment down below. What was your favorite? What you, For 2018, what did you vote as best anime, best OST, and what was your favorite rom-com from the year? Comment that down below. Also, I'm your man behind the cam. As always, never forget, stay nasty, y'all. Oh, but I'm really fucking shaking, bro.